we traveled to the Improv Comedy Club in the historic Cigar District of Tampa, Florida. And we're here to find the funniest comedians to compete in a joke-off. The judges are Tim Polnick from Burn Notice, Mary Ellen Hooper from Comedy Central and The Tonight Show, and Grandma Lee from America's Got Talent. 30 hopeful comedians arrive to audition for one of eight final slots in the joke-off held before a live audience tonight. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for coming out. It's one in the afternoon in the open mic bar next to the improv. Uh, all right, so this is how we're going to do auditions. Um, everybody is going to get uh, two topics each. How are you? How long have you... Say your name. Tell us your name. Sean Finnerty. Yes. And uh, how long have you been doing comedy? I started about uh, nine months ago. And you're from Wisconsin? <laughs> I am from Wisconsin, yes. All right, we're going to give you two topics. You get a minute for each one, and after the minute, you'll hear the bell. And that's okay. the happy bell for most people. The first topic is uh, sunscreen. Sunscreen. You're going to give a redhead a topic about sunscreen? Because <laughs> I'm more like a vampire. I tend to just stay away from the sun at all costs. I think, uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I tan like an albino. I doubt you've ever been on a vacation with just dudes, but every one of the guys has that solid red mark where they can't reach on their own back because no dudes want to touch ah. another dude. Sunscreen. You're welcome. What you want to make sure that you do is know a lady before you go to put sunscreen on her. And then it gets a little sexual really fast. I actually uh, tried that several times. It is not a good way to get a date. <laughs> oh, oh, sunscreen. I obviously don't need that. Uh, I obviously didn't use it, apparently. <laughs> I'm lucky I'm very hairy. I don't need sunscreen. When I take off my shirt and I'm on the beach, I get highlights instead of a tan. But check. I always think it's funny when you see guys that are hairy wearing sunscreen because it's usually hard to decide which side to part it on. <laughs> when you want to gel it, I just want to spike it up. In the back, I should do something more of like a, uh, a bombage. I blow it out in the back. <laughs> sunscreen. Uh... Are you a comic or do you just wander around with this other crap? And all my friends, they always worry about putting it on their kids. I'm like, well, don't even worry about it. There's nothing you can do. They're going to be assholes anyway. <laughs> it's going to be a good night. Did you start drinking yet? I mean, am I allowed to say yes? Because yes. What happened to your hat? You think, uh, I left it. That probably would have got rid of the hat, too. That probably okay. would have helped. The hat didn't help. <laughs> we had 60 seconds, and it was like, I don't know, there was a silence for like a minute. But then, like, after this, that's what happens when you get a whole bunch of comedians in one spot. Uh, you guys go up against each other tonight. Perfect. Oh, that'd great. be great. We have similar hair. I think that'll yeah. work. We look very similar, actually. We really do. I'm not really intimidated by anybody because we all have kind of the same disadvantage. The auditions continue with round two. I just don't understand. I can't. I have problems dating. I think it's my approach. I really do. I don't. I can't. I, well, uh, like I said, but like I said, I, traffic. I love traffic uh, because I find out more about myself in my car. Uh, I can be who I want to be in my car. I can sing a Miley Cyrus song, and no one's gonna judge me except for me. When I do look in that mirror, and I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I should stop. And then. I dance in my car all the time, and not like like a, like a head bob, like I'm full on, right. yeah, let's get this going. Do you, first of all, do you have a beard? Do I have a beard? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's not a tattoo. No, this is a beard. <laughs> okay. It'd be a very realistic tattoo. Okay. Hide and go seek is actually my favorite uh, game, because uh, I go hide and my kids go to their mom's house. Uh, <laughs> that's really awesome. Your next topic, uh, I think this will be a good one, uh, high school. So I put on my hat, right, and uh, and I go in the classroom, and the teacher's like, uh, you can't wear hats in this classroom. And I was like, look, Miss Tetherstone, I'm having a bad hair day. Can I just wear it today? She was like, um, excuse me, nobody can wear things on their head in this classroom at all. It's the rules. And that's when I got pissed off. I was like, really, bitch? Because you wear that wig all the time. Ooh. Nobody tells you. Take the wig off. <laughs> car wash. The car wash nowadays is like $15, 20 in some places. That's more than my stereo cost in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's really fair to wax my car. Waxing my car is almost like putting fake breasts on a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not going to increase the value that much. If my, you know what, all I can say first is I'm glad these elections are over with. Okay, because if I wanted to see two people telling lies on my television, I would just plug in my old wedding video. <laughs>
While the comedians take a break, the judges review their notes to select eight contestants for tonight's show. You got them? Well, I, for three, I think I think he was good for. Well, who sticks out in your head like that? You're thinking. We did good. I yeah. think so too. I think I think did perfect. Yeah. It's after six o'clock. It's a full house tonight with over 400 people in the crowd. The joke off has the comedians competing in pairs. The one with the loudest response from the crowd stays in until there's one champion left. Uh, one minute on nursing homes. Begin. homes in Ireland. <laughs> we just put them in a bag and them over the back. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That was a joke. So, uh, my grandmother does live in a nursing home. It's a pity because it's more expensive than a shotgun. <laughs> deja vu is a dangerous thing because there's some things that you think are deja vu and then there's other things that you just did when you were really drunk <laughs> and then you think you thought you did them and you actually did and it's terrible because you're like wait I did that oh deja vu is the worst <laughs> oh there it is <laughs> All right, good job, good job. Ryan, it's your turn. One minute on Deja Vu and begin. Deja Vu, that, that's Kanye and Kim's baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> Long Island Mary, you, you got one minute on Christmas and begin. Hi, I'm Long Island Mary, and Christmas was a very big holiday in my family, big Catholic family. Not so Catholic that we had Mary on the half show on the front row. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but every Christmas we put lights around her, and she'd be out on the front lawn, and, and she looks something like this for the heathen, if you don't know. This is how she looks. <laughs> My mother would say, oh, she's watching over us. Merry Christmas. They'd say, ma, she's looking down. I think she's disappointed. <laughs> But we love Christmas. We're a big, crazy bunch. My nephew said, get me a book for Christmas. So I did. I got a Moby Dick. Maybe you've heard of it. The pop-up book. Did you know? It's just came out. <laughs> it's a hot cover. It's a hot cover. <laughs> Superman, Mighty Mouse, Spider-Man, Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. Well, if you ever wanted proof that this competition is a f fix, here it is right here. What the f would I know about Flash Gordon? I'm from Ireland. We don't, we don't even have comic books in Ireland. Flash Gordon, I'm going to have to ad lib this one. I, am, I, I got, am I meant to drop my pants? I don't even. <laughs> it's Flash Gordon. Sounds like an unemployed male stripper, so here we go. This is my impersonation of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you. My pleasure. Perfect timing. Uh, Angelo, I, I know I don't have anything on Flash Gordon, so let's see if you do. You have one Angelo, minute to begin. Just start where he left off. <laughs> Especially when it comes to dating, you know, like I even like autocorrect would screw you up. I invited a girl over to a snuggle and have milk and roofies. <laughs> and my phone corrected that to cookies. I love Facebook. 
Facebook. I hate that my mother is on it. She's 87. It's not good. She gets lost a lot, but she makes a lot of friends. And she's always encouraging me to date. She thinks I'm going to meet somebody on Facebook. I said, Ma, that's a little tricky. Remember, I'm a, a late, in life, late in life lesbian. Maybe you've heard of the thing I've got. It's called AOL, Adult Onset Lesbianism. It's also known as Type 2 Gay. You might have heard of it. Yeah. But there's no good dating stuff on Facebook. I wander around and I ended up on, you know, Christian Mingle, but I can't find the lesbian section. Christian Mingle. <laughs> But I did find what sounds like a really great gay dating website. I think you've heard of this one, Edible Arrangements. One minute on Fifty Shades of Grey begins. My fiance stabbed me with a fork in the ass. Not in the butthole, just over to the cheek side. And I was like, she was like, they said it was hot in the book. I'm like, And then she put it back in the drawer. <laughs> Angelo, you have you have one minute on Miley Cyrus. <laughs> All I need is one minute on Miley Cyrus, and I won't need this competition anymore. <laughs> I love the thanks to Miley Cyrus. Girls don't have to learn how to dance anymore. All they do is twerk. And for those of you that don't know what twerking is, it's basically your daughter making a mockery of your family. He goes to the nearest nightclub, finds the loudest music, and makes black guy puts her feet on the wall on either side of him. Wow! <laughs> but you're still going to respect me, right? so often, there comes a point in your life where you realize, eh, the other guy just wanted it more. 